Never, I've never seen anything like that, I pray to God I never to see it again. It's what seasoned medical professionals called a bloody massacre, comparing this crime scene to a horror movie. Brand new body camera captures the unsettling aftermath when a high schooler gave birth in an emergency room bathroom, allegedly killing her newborn son. I've never, ever seen a reaction like that girl. On January 27th, 19-year-old Alexi Treviso was admitted to an Artesia, New Mexico emergency room after complaining of back pain. Her newborn son was later found stuffed inside a trash can in a bloody bathroom she had just used. The high school senior was charged with first-degree murder and tampering with evidence before her graduation. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. That's very... Long Crime Network first brought you the chilling body camera video last month when medical professionals confronted Treviso about the baby. See, I told you about this. I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or making. It was what did you do to it? Now we're hearing from medical staff who uncovered the gruesome scene after she gave birth. When I went in there, it was a glory bloody massacre. Body camera video shows police officers speaking with medical staff who worked the night Treviso was admitted into the ER. She said she needed to go have a bowel movement and that's kind of when the whole thing happened. Hospital surveillance video shows Treviso leave her patient room at 1.38 a.m waddling toward the bathroom while clutching her back. Treviso remains in the bathroom for 19 minutes as multiple people check on her. I knocked on the door and I said, are you okay? And she said, yes, I'm fine. I'm just having a hard time going to the bathroom is what she replied. So I was like, okay. At some point I went and kind of checked on her, knocked on the door, seen if she needed anything. She denied, she said she didn't need anything. Did you hear anything? I didn't hear anything. Flush, yeah. toilet flush. Yes, after a while I started hearing. So I probably checked on her one, two to three times, I'm not exactly sure. And then I just kept hearing paper towel dispenser mm -hmm. and um, flushing and like the water running. And I knocked again, did she need anything? Denied anything. And then eventually it got to a point where I said, you need to come out. And mm -hmm. I, got, I asked the uh, the clerk to get the key to unlock the door because obviously she locked the door to go to the restroom and uh, whenever I finally we finally had the key to unlock it she opened it and just kind of walked out. And Did she say anything at that point? She didn't point? say anything. She was just looking kind of straight past me and went back to the room. Surveillance video captures that moment as Treviso leaves the bathroom and heads back to the patient room. It was then that hospital staff got a look at the bloody bathroom for the first time. And all I saw was like blood everywhere, like on the walls, on the toilet. It just looked like a horror film. Police speak to multiple people who saw the bathroom, describing fresh blood on the walls, floor, and near the toilet. The toilets right here where you're at, mm -hmm. and then the sinks right here, it was like up this way, blood splatter. What if, like... In your, in your line of work, what would cause that kind of splatter? I think something that got pulled out or ripped, like, like if you ripped something and blood just went, it was like, like once you see the, the photo, you'll mm -hmm. see what I'm talking about. It's just. So if you say like rip, like something went like that? Yeah, like if you, when you rip something or if you cut something and you go, like you swing your hand and blood mm -hmm. just splatters. Okay. So that's how it looked. Oh, so this was fresh to you. Yes. This blood was fresh. And you could even smell it. We didn't know what this blood was from. We were, we were. A little concerned that maybe she had, you know, known that we were going to figure it out and that she might have harmed herself or something in the restroom, so the doc wanted to go check her, but obviously that wasn't the case. Unclear as to what had happened, other nursing staff care for Treviso, believing she had a miscarriage. Oh, she came out of the restroom. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little trail of blood from the bathroom back to her room. Uh, we went to her room. I went to get her undressed. Uh, the doctor came in, explained to her that she had a miscarriage. Her, and her mom had a back and forth about it. The doctor said she had a miscarriage? Yeah. Okay. She said it, like, it seems, essentially, like, I'm not sure the exact words. So it was a few months ago, but she said, you know, it seems that you've uh, suffered from a miscarriage. Which didn't seem totally abnormal. It seemed, it seemed awful miscarriages before they were very bloody. Right. And so... Was um, she bloody? 
Mm -hmm. Blood in her was, legs. And yeah, she had blood all down her legs, and then there was like blood in the bathroom everywhere. So where exactly was the blood, and how much? Uh, it was a good amount. It was like on the floor. Minutes later, cleaning staff arrived to wash up the bathroom. I was called and uh, to go clean the patient's bathroom in ER around I can't maybe two o'clock or so. I think it was the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. So when I went in there. It was a glory, bloody massacre mess. Okay. Could you describe it if possible? Uh, yeah, there was blood everywhere. Uh, there was blood on the floor, on the wall. Do you remember which wall? Um, the one behind the toilet, and then the one on the side right here. You know, there's the one on, where the toilet sits, back of that. Yeah. And then on the side. Uh, where the call button is? Yeah. Okay. And uh, on the floor, everywhere. After cleaning the entire bathroom twice, the cleaner grabbed the trash bag to toss it away. That's when she discovered the newborn baby. When I went to go through the trash, I felt that when I picked up the trash and I looked in it, there was a, you know, there was trash in it. But I knew that it was, it didn't feel like when I picked it up, it was on weight. So I thought it was the, the trash bags because we put the trash bags on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I started getting the trash out. And then when I did that, I seen that there was a baby in there. And that's when I, um, I freaked out and I called a, uh, uh, Lori and HT are the nurses up front, and because uh, there was a baby in the trash, and the baby when I looked at it, I, the baby was wrapped up like in a, you know, like at the bottom of the trash can, and with mm -hmm. trash on top of, in a trash bag. And so, how did you did you see it like as soon as you picked it up? Uh, no, after I picked up the the trash bag that was uh, on top, you know, okay. where so they were throwing the trash at. When I picked that up to change it. That's when I noticed that there was, uh, when I seen the baby. Can you like describe the baby? Yeah, it, it, he was about like that big. He had hair. And um, he was like purplish, but still not like pink. You know, I don't know how to describe it. You know, he was like, he wasn't bruised or nothing like that. And he was like purple, pink. Pink, it's skin type color. The cleaner then calls for a nurse who describes the disturbing moment the infant was discovered. And then when I picked it up, that's when I noticed it even more because all I saw was black and purple. But once we picked it up, like the bag suctioned to his face. And that's when I yelled for my charge nurse, which was HT. And I told him, um, hey, she put her baby in the trash can. So um, I handed the baby to him. And he took off to the trauma room and opened up the bag, and then that's when we went and got Dr. Vasquez. Police then hear from the nurse in charge, who says it was clear early on that the newborn was dead. I go in the bathroom and she goes, something's in the trash can. I'm like, I looked in there, there's a clean liner. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, pick it up. I pick it up, I can feel the weight. I knew then we had a serious problem. I immediately took, I just grabbed the trash can and went right across the hall into trauma two. Um, I pulled, the liner was pulled out, but there was another trash bag in there in the bottom, but it was all kind of, it was rolled up. So I had to tear it apart. And then, of course, I saw the baby in there. So I pulled the baby out, got him on the bed, checked for signs of life. There was absolutely no life whatsoever. Um, I immediately came out of there after I did that, went into the room where she was performing, the, she was performing the vaginal exam, and I immediately told her, you have to come out now. And she came out and we went into trauma too and she reassessed the baby at that time between me and chris and her we determined you know there was no reason for us to begin any life saving the baby was completely gone another nurse recalls the same moments and could you tell if the baby was alive or, or they didn't look alive it didn't look alive, look alive. Look alive. Okay. but also I, I think the time that passed since she left the the bathroom and it being in the bag, you know, it was just... How long do you think that was? Maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, I just have a right. guess, I don't know. We brought the baby up, we called the doctor obviously out of the room from her, her exam, and uh, we came in, kind of doc, assessed the baby and, you know, basically determined it was not viable to to completely work the baby and all of that. So. That nurse tells officers he believes Treviso knew she was pregnant and wanted to hide it from medical staff. It just seemed like we were being just deceived from the beginning. Like, but that that's just my, my take on it. It seemed like she was very manipulative with us. And it was at least what it seemed like to me. She didn't want you to discover 
you know, that she was pregnant. And she wore really baggy clothing. Um, yeah, and she, she would just, she wouldn't sit still for you. I'm sure she was very uncomfortable too, but yeah, she, she wouldn't allow you to do it. It seemed like she'd been trying to hide this pregnancy from her mother from some for some time. Mm -hmm. So if you pray, if you know you're pregnant, you're not going to continue taking birth control pills. It's, but if you're trying to hide it, you might start taking weight loss medications. That's just kind of what it seemed like in my head. Other staff described the lengths Treviso allegedly went to to keep her pregnancy and birth a secret. The umbilical cord looked like an animal had torn it apart. Like, you know, have you ever eaten string cheese? Mm -hmm. like, you know, when you twist it, that's how the bottom of the umbilical cord looked. And it, I just remember it caught my eye and I was like, God, I was like, this, this chick really ripped this thing apart. After this, medical staff called the police and alert Treviso about their discovery. I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, you do have to have the police involved. I that thing was crying. It came out with that thing. And then I went in there to talk to the, to the patient okay. and um, asked her why was the baby in the trash can. And what did she say? She said that it just came out of her and she didn't know what to do. And I said, um, did your baby take at least one breath when it first happened? Or did it, did it take at least one breath or was it not breathing? And then she kind of looked at me in the, in the face and the eyes and she was like, well, can I tell you? And I said, tell me what? And she said, um, so I've been having this bad abdominal pain, she said, and we came here to the ER and when they brought me back here to this room, I felt like I needed to go poop. She said, and I asked if I could go to the bathroom. She said, and so when they said, yeah, that I could go to the bathroom, she said, when I sat on the toilet, she said, it just all fell out. And she said, but when I had it in my arms, it wasn't breathing, it wasn't moving. And so, of course, you want to be very, very judgmental at that time. And you have to bite your tongue sometimes. But, you know, my first reaction was like, I wanted to say, hey, well, then why wouldn't you call us for help? But I didn't. I so, um, she said, so I just, he wasn't moving, he wasn't breathing. So I just placed him in there. Nurses who spoke with Treviso after the baby was discovered say she never asked about him. Instead, they say she was more concerned that she would get in trouble with her mother. Did they have any comments? Not one. Really? Um, I was really surprised. Not one person asked me about the baby, if it was alive, if it was dead, if it was a boy, if it was a girl. No one asked me anything. Not even, she didn't Not even ask. No, she didn't ask. The only thing she started doing was crying and started talking about she didn't know what to do. Not one. I've never seen in my, I mean, I've delivered multiple babies and I've seen multiple miscarriages and I've never seen a reaction like that and um, I I don't even know what to say about that I've never seen anything like it like how ever. would you describe the reaction I think um, there was there was no emotion except for herself and she really wasn't even crying tears she was just and the only thing she was upset about was that I think she was going to be in trouble with her mother she didn't say anything about what had happened. Mm -hmm. She was just essentially worried that she was just going to get in trouble. So uh, that's what I mean. W were those the questions she was asking? Mm -hmm. Like, like so what's going to happen to me? Like that kind of thing. Did she ever ask about the baby? No. Not once. She essentially was scared. She was worried that she was going to get in trouble. Um, she did have a back and forth with her mother that was just about like, They had said, oh, the mom was upset because she had had sex and hadn't told her. So mm -hmm. they were going back and forth on that, and then she was just denying it, which was a little out of the, wasn't really deniable at that point in time. Right. So the patient was denying having sex at this point to her mom. Yeah, she was trying to state that she was still a virgin. After she came in from the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Others believe Treviso knew she was up to no good. She definitely knew what she was doing and what was doing was wrong because of the way she was talking to me. 
you know, just stating, you know, I didn't realize I was pregnant, and, you know, that I'm taking birth control, you know, so, I mean, she was panicked, but, you know, she, I didn't see her being in a state of mind where she did not know what she was doing. Multiple hospital staff members say the incident is not one they will soon forget. When there's like one or two things in the wastebasket, I usually pick it up and take it out, but I didn't that night. And then, like, I've been kicking myself on this because I feel like, you know, if I would have just taken it out, I would have seen it. Well, no one, ex no one prepares for that type of thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Most people don't act like that, so don't blame yourself for it. Yeah. Because it's not a natural thing to do. Well, I mean, saying. it's just hard because I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and I've never, I've dealt with death before, but never like this. Right. You know, like, it was horrible. I'm just going to tell you this. I've never, ever seen a reaction like that girl. I, I am, I don't even know what to say about it. There was zero emotion. Um. I just, I don't even know what to say. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen women that are only married, or not married, but um, pregnant for six weeks and they lose that baby and they're a mess. You know what I mean? That girl went into that bathroom, made no sounds at all, and the baby came out of her. And had, I, I don't even know how she functioned that way to do what she did and, and with no emotion. I've never seen anything like it. And it was a it was a pretty good sized baby, pretty good size. It looked term to me. Yeah, me too. I mean, it was term. I I can't tell you that was, but the only thing that upsets me the most is, I understand she was scared, and I think her mother and had a big dynamic on her, and I I understand that. I mean, I think her mother was probably pretty controlling. I don't know that. I'm just speculation. Um, but she gave me no chance to save that baby. I had no chance, and that's not what I do. My job is to save lives, and I had no chance on that baby. She gave me no chance. And we are a facility that you can drop the baby off, no questions asked. You, I don't even. You can just leave the baby and go. I, I am no. I don't care. You know, as long as you bring the baby to a safe. We are one of those type of hospitals, so it's hard to fathom what was going on in her mind. I, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen anything like that, and I pray to God I never see it again. A jury trial date for Treviso has been set for October 2nd. If convicted on the top count of first-degree murder, she could face life in prison. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.